morning. Yeah, this is uh, another beautiful day. It's still dark outside. We're on our way now to uh, the dunes by the dead flay at the end of the Chauhab River. It runs dry in the desert. So, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It's going to be some uh, beautiful scenery. So, let's go. We were fortunate enough to stay inside the Naukluft Park. If you stay inside the campsite at Sesrim or at Dead Valley Lodge, you can go to the dunes an hour earlier than at sunrise, when the park gates only opens. Then we were able to get to the dunes just before sunrise and run up the dune to try and reach the top before the sun rises. We chose to climb Dune 40 instead of Dune 45, as Dune 45 is normally much busier. The dunes were numbered in order and is roughly also about 45 kilometers from the entrance to the park. These dunes are static, star-shaped dunes. The redness of the sand comes from oxidation. All the iron ore in the sand rusts over time and gives the dunes their reddish color. The Namib Desert is a harsh and arid environment with extreme temperature variations between day and night. The desert flora and fauna have adapted to survive in this challenging environment. Desert adapted creatures such as oryx and springbok and various reptiles can be found in the vicinity of the dunes. Visiting Dune 45 and Dune 40 offers an opportunity to experience the raw beauty and tranquility of the Namib Desert. The dunes provide excellent vantage points to witness captivating sunrises and sunsets as the changing light accentuates the colors and contours of the sand. Climbing the dunes can be a challenging but very rewarding experience, offering panoramic views of the desert landscape that stretches out as far as the eye can see. I climbed down the side of the dune to explore a bit further. This side still quite cold but the walking down went very easy and much faster. Okay, let's go down. The shoes is filling up with sand. The shoes is going to be two sizes too small when I get to the bottom. This is so easy. Just one step at a time. There's Dune 45. You can see here the black shine, it's the uh, iron ore in the dune. Looks like oryx tracks coming up here. All the grass around here looks to have been eaten all the way up. So I'm taking the oryx tracks back down again. I guess the oryx must have taken the easiest route to get up. Of course, it did also go from grass patch to grass patch to have a little bite. So I'm just gonna go straight down. It's gonna be still quite a walk around the dune to get back to the others. But we'll see what kind of a tracks we can see on the way. It's gonna be interesting to know what animals have visited this dune. Probably oryx and springbok, uh, all kinds of lizards, beetles, tuk spiders, ants, 
you can see some of the droppings and here is a whole midden of droppings it's probably a springbok so here we are at the bottom I'll take a walk on the path to get back this is now the Chao Hub river riverbed it's all dry now but every once every now and then it would rain enough on the Naukluft mountains that it could uh, flood over here so that we can have water flowing all the way to uh, Sosses Flay That doesn't happen much often. From Dune 40, we had to drive another 12 kilometers to the 4x4 parking, where we would start our drive through the thick sand to Sauces Flay and Dead Flay. If you don't have a vehicle with 4x4, you can get onto a Jeep or this tractor with wagon to take you the 5 kilometers through the sand to Sauces Flay. The sand here is very thick and you have to keep your momentum going to prevent getting stuck. The biggest dune here in the area, the one there on the left, is next to Dead Flay and is around 350 meters and it's called Big Daddy. We came to enjoy our packed breakfast here just next to the Sauces Flay. Sosus Flay is a mesmerizing clay pan. The contrasting colors of the white clay pan against the vibrant orange dunes create a striking visual spectacle. Sosus Flay is a popular destination for visitors who are captivated by the surreal beauty of the desert landscape. Sosus Flay and Dead Flay was created through a combination of geological processes over millions of years. The formation of Sosses Flay involves the interplay of wind, sand and water. The Namib Desert is situated along the Atlantic Ocean coast. The desert's climate is extremely arid, receiving very little rainfall. However, occasional heavy rains occur in the region, typically during rare and intense thunderstorms. When it rains a lot in the high Naukluft Mountains to the east, the water flows down into the Chauhab River, which flows further deep into the desert. The formation of Sosses Flay begins with the wind. The prevailing winds in the area, known as the prevailing southwesterlies, blow from the ocean towards the land. These winds carry vast amounts of sand, which have been washed out into the ocean by the Orange River then blown inland from the coastal areas, depositing them as sand dunes in the desert. Water plays a crucial role in the creation of Sosses Flay. Although rainfall is infrequent, when heavy rains do occur, they often result in flash floods. The floods can temporarily transform the normally dry riverbeds into temporary rivers, carrying water into the pan area of Sosses Flay. The water accumulates in the clay and salt pan, creating temporary lakes. Over time, as the water evaporates under the intense desert heat, it leaves behind salt and clay deposits, forming a hardened crust in the pan. This hardened surface prevents further water infiltration into the ground, causing the water to evaporate rather than being absorbed. The continuous cycle of wind erosion, sand deposition, Occasional heavy rains and subsequent evaporation of water has shaped the dunes and the pan of Sosses Flay and Dead Flay over countless years, creating the breathtaking desert landscape that we see today. It's important to note that Sosses Flay is a dynamic and ever-changing environment. As the wind constantly reshapes the dunes and the availability of water in the pan varies with the sporadic rainfall patterns. Uh, 
translates to Dead Marsh, which is also where the desert that has cut off the Chauha River. Geological studies suggest that the clay deposits in Dead Flay could be more than 2 million years old. The clay pan floor of Dead Flay is not static. It undergoes subtle shifts and changes due to the movement of the sand and occasional rainfall. There was a real place cut off from civilization by the desert left to petrify in the desert sun. 900 year old camel thorn trees. The dead camel thorn trees in dead flay have survived to, for centuries without decomposing or being eroded by the elements. The dry climate, low humidity, lack of wood boring insects and also a fascinating symbiotic relationship with a type of a fungus known as black fungi forms a protective layer on the tree surface preventing further decay contribute to the remarkable endurance and preservation that was a dead flay this is a toktoki beetle they have specialized mouth parts that allow them to extract moisture from the fog On our way back, we noticed some strange circles formed in the grass. From more research done, they are called fairy circles and they are mostly formed by termites. It seems like more people have noticed this natural phenomenon and made a whole study of it as seen from this book. This is uh, Dune 1. It's the uh, first big dune on the way to Sosus Lake. So this is again the end of this episode. I really hope you enjoyed watching this episode and perhaps learned some interesting things about Namibian desert. I would again like to thank Coppers Expeditions and Sama Tours for inviting me on this tour. It is a great opportunity to show these unique and special places in Namibia. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and add a like to my videos. It helps to spread the channel to more audiences. Thank you for watching again, see you next time.